and welcome to the United States of Africa News Network. My name is Akoswa Prempe, broadcasting to you with pride from the heart of our united African spirit. Today we bring you an inspiring story from Burkina Faso, a powerful example of African brilliance, innovation and determination. Two young Burkina Bay engineers are developing advanced drones, rockets, and cutting edge technologies right from a modest workshop in Ouagadougou. Their work represents the new Africa, an Africa that invents, builds, and rises with its own hands. This story is not just about technology. It is about the courage of African youth, the vision of a sovereign continent, and the future we are shaping together. Before we begin, please remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share this broadcast. We are uniting all Africans across the continent and the diaspora, and your engagement helps connect our 1.4 billion people under one mission, unity, strength, and progress. The Burkinabe made Ninjin Ifrit drone in full test flight in the neighborhood of Ouagadougou. Second test flight, the Piga drone, an improvised explosive device detector. These two drones were entirely designed and built in these rather modest facilities. As you can see, we are not at the facilities of the Turkish drone manufacturer Akinci Bayraktar, but we are right here in Ouagadougou, in a neighborhood whose name we will keep secret for security reasons. Here, two young Burkinab innovators, Alexandra Uwandogu and Toussaint Kientigba, both passionate about technology, are developing fixed-wing drones, drone helicopters, a rocket, and other advanced technologies. Here we have a fixed-wing drone that is also capable of vertical takeoff. And this drone, we named it Ningjin Ifrit, a local name for the designation. And for the drone that is here currently, which we designed from the body all the way to the components visible, we designed them right here on site. But now, the components here that we bought, it is just the motors, a little bit of electronics. We bought the components. But here we bought the electronic components to design in our own way. But everything from the code to the drone, the mechanical support systems, etc., we designed them on site, including the geometry, all of that. For a drone to fly, you have to calculate the wing geometry and study the aerodynamic systems, etc. All of that, we did it right here. This drone, first of all, we designed it, as you see here, it will be equipped with a camera, it will be equipped with a camera that will be used for mapping, that will be used for aerial surveillance. It can also be used for detection. Since the camera will have artificial intelligence integrated into the camera, which will allow detection, for example, if Sonabel uses it to monitor its high tension lines, we can take photos, captures to train the model and tell the system that when you see this, it means this is this, it means that is that. So here is a little bit of what this drone will be used to do. Before assembly, this is where the frames and other drone components are manufactured. The printer is capable of, of handling many different filaments. With this printer, first of all, we do the CADI design on the computer. And after the design, now we load the file onto the 3D printer. And after loading the file onto the 3D printer, now we start the printing and here's the result we can get. This is it. So this is the part of our drone that we're going to assemble right away. But before printing, the work is done on paper, then on the computer. We have paper on in which we will study the system, do the various geometric calculations, aerodynamic ones, even often do the electronic connections, all of that. And now we move to the computer. And on the computer, we do the simulation on the computer and the parts to design. We adapt them with the design we made on paper. In terms of usage, the Ning Nifri drone, which means the eye from above, can be used for civilian purposes in the fields of topography, mapping, agriculture, photography, aerial videography, infrastructure inspection, and power line monitoring. In the security field, it can be used for monitoring sensitive areas and espionage. According to its designers, the drone can fly at a speed of 60 to 70 kilometers per hour. This success comes after many experiments combined with passion and perseverance. 
but it has to be said that it is with passion. When there is passion, we can go a long way. Before reaching this stage, it must be said that there were many trials and many failures too. We had to do a first trial that was not successful. The drone crashed, totally broken. So we had to come back and start everything from scratch again. And today we see that there is some stability coming. So from the beginning, it has not been easy. Beyond this drone, our enthusiasts have also designed the KUKA-88 for aerial reconnaissance. The drone you see here is the KUKA-88. This drone was designed for aerial surveillance and also reconnaissance missions, terrain inspections, all of that, just like the other drone. But here, the difference with this one is that with this drone, we cannot do vertical flight. So we absolutely have to give the drone a boost by either hand launching it or catapulting it. After experiencing a first attempt where the test flight drone crashed, the two engineers chose to launch the drone from this ramp. The drone flight can be programmed. We can also do a pre-programmed flight. There, we program the flight, the different GPS positions we want the drone to go to, the different missions we want the drone to perform. We can also program the positions where the drone will go. And regarding the camera, the video feed that is handled by the operator, we program all of this so that everything will be loaded by the system. And now all we have to do is launch the drone. Once the drone is launched, that is all. The drone will carry out the mission and return to land safely. Another build that captivates is the Piga drone, named in tribute to Captain Piga, a fearless warrior who fell for the homeland. Here is the drone we have on the table, the Piga. That is its three-dimensional model. And using this three-dimensional model, we had initiated the purchase of this frame from a company that does carbon fiber cutting. But once we are equipped with a computer numerical control cutting machine for carbon fiber, we will be able to make all these cuts ourselves. This drone is designed solely to detect improvised explosive devices to help the defense and security forces in their resupply missions and in their advance on the battlefield. Indeed, the drone was built to detect mines buried in the ground. There is this sensor, which is a metal detector. During its mission, the drone is supposed to tilt this detector downward toward the ground, which will allow it to thoroughly scan the soil to detect mines. Since mines have... It, There is inevitably the use of the metal components such as metal wires, even tiny leads, the electrical cables that supply these mines with energy. So this detector is capable of finding them. The device features a flight control board, a flight controller, a six cell battery, motor controllers, four motors, propellers, a receiver, a telemetry system, and a sensor, among other components. For example, if our soldiers want to carry out a mission as soon as the next day, they can wake up at dawn or the night before, send the drone to inspect the terrain first. And then, during the inspections, the drone will detect the various suspicious areas and then record their positions on the digital platform. And through this platform, our defense and security forces will be able to see exactly where there is danger. With that, the next day during of the mission, while the security forces take their route, they will take these positions into account. Once they arrive at these positions, they can try to choose manual options or specific options based on their capabilities so they can defuse these mines or destroy them before moving forward. In this makeshift workshop, our two young Birkinabe go beyond drones to explore the field of space with this. With cutting-edge technologies, including the design of rockets for research and experimentation, my goal here is to be able to master this field, uh, uh, starting from zero, uh, from A to Z, to utilize this entire field. We designed our electronic board, our own electronic board, to be able to build the drones. We also plan to design our engines, our own engines. Even though it is done through a chemical process, we are going to do it. We will design our own engine to be able to propel it. And at this level, uh, we have we will have air brakes that will allow us to guide the rocket through uh, by breaking the air. Among Europeans, it can also be called air brake in the field, but it will allow us to control the effect. It is like valves. So it will allow us to guide the air in order to properly stabilize the, the rocket around its flight. In the military field, this rocket can be designed differently to carry military payloads. And at this level, Alexander Wandao and all his Kintigas have already planned everything. When we opt for military use, there the complexity will be quite different. Since the chassis, uh, the fuselage, we can change it, perhaps make it in carbon fiber. That is what we are planning even for our next rocket, in carbon fiber. And the electronics, we will design it in a way adapted for this military use. And at the engine level, we will need to develop a powerful enough engine that will allow us to propel it to sufficient distances for this military use. 
and beyond that also we will have to develop it in such a way that it can be adapted to military drones that carry rockets. So, and also at the electronic cone level too, we can design it and adapt it in a way for surface to air launch or also air to surface launch. Another technology under development is LoRaWAN, a long range technology that broadcasts waves and is intended for connected objects. So here you see for example these water meters, these are smart meters. So we do not need to travel to perform operations on these meters. And these meters work with LoRaWAN technology which is typically intended for connected objects. For example, this one here is a sensor, it is a GPS. With this one, when you charge it, it runs for two to three months. You can place it somewhere in a vehicle and it activates every two minutes. Every two minutes it sends your position data. So to view this data, we have developed a platform where you can visualize all this information. Also for the meters, we have developed a remote control platform for these meters. There you go. And alongside that, a door detector. This one is a sensor, a humidity sensor that you place in the soil, which transmits regularly. Send you soil moisture data. This new technology is designed for the National Water Company to manage its meters remotely. For meter reading, the index, we do not need to travel to go see the meter index remotely anymore. We already know the index sends every day. So here at the alert level, once there is a, a leak on the platform here already, we are alerted that there are leaks. If the meter battery, uh, there is an issue, we are alerted. For example, the battery life of these meters, it is 15 years. In addition, the LoRaWAN technology is associated with a GPS capable of tracking the movements of people in the city of Ouagadougou. Alexandra Nwam Daogo and Toussaint Kintiga work within the company Vixby Echo Technologies of Burkinabe. Adams Runiel Wedraogo, based abroad. Let us say that we are not just two people. We work with engineers but who are not on site in Burkina Faso. We work with three engineers who are on the other side in Europe. It is with them in synergy together that we are developing this. Yes, in Ouagadougou, here we have no partners, nobody gives a helping hand. It is just the two of us developing this. This work responds to the vision of the head of state, Captain Ibrahim Traore, who calls with all his wishes for Burkinabe youth to engage fully in work, particularly in invention, so that ultimately the country can limit its imports. For these two technology geniuses, the wish is clear. Support from the authorities will be a real boost for large-scale assembly, whether of drones, rockets, or other technologies. My brothers and sisters, this is what African innovation looks like when we believe in ourselves. Now I want to hear from you. Your voice matters in this movement. Leave your thoughts in the comments section. One, do you believe African governments should invest more in young inventors like these two Burkina Bay geniuses? Why or why not? To how can we, as Africans across all 54 countries, support and promote local innovation like this? Share your answers below, because together we are building the future of Africa.